Hello and welcome to this presentation on oxygen transport. Firstly, we will look at how is oxygen transported from the lungs to the cells of the tissues. Ventilation of the lungs supplies oxygen to the alveolus. Diffusion of oxygen then crosses the alveolus to the pulmonary capillaries. Oxygen is then carried by the blood. This includes oxygen that is bound to haemoglobin and oxygen that is dissolved in plasma. And finally, oxygen diffuses from the capillary to the mitochondria. What is the oxygen cascade? The oxygen cascade describes the sequential reduction in PO2 from the atmosphere to cellular mitochondria. Now we will look at what happens at each step of the oxygen cascade. In this presentation, I have split the cascade up into seven steps in order to make it easier to follow. Step 1. Oxygen is present in the air at a concentration of 21%. Atmospheric pressure at sea level is 1 atmosphere or 101 kilopascals. Inspired PO2 is therefore 21 kilopascals. Secondly, humidification of inspired air occurs in the upper respiratory tract. At 37 degrees Celsius, the saturated vapour pressure of water in the trachea is 6.3 kilopascals. Therefore, the PO2 in the trachea is 101 minus 6 multiplied by 0.21. We therefore come to a value of 19.95 kilopascals. This is the partial pressure of oxygen in the trachea. Now we will look at steps 3 and 4. By the time oxygen has reached the alveoli, the PO2 has fallen to about 15 kilopascals. This is due to mixing with dead space gases. Four. The PO2 of the alveolar gas then drops further to 30.8 kilopascals as it mixes with alveolar gas. The PO2 of the gas in the alveoli is a balance between two processes. The removal of oxygen by the pulmonary capillaries and its continual supply by alveolar ventilation. Steps 5 and 6. The PO2 of arterial blood is 13.3 kilopascals. Under normal circumstances, the alveolar arterial gradient is less than 2 kilopascals. Arterial blood then passes to the tissues. The PO2 of the capillaries is in the order of 6 to 7 kilopascals. The decrease we see from arterial blood to capillary blood is due to venous mixing. Finally, Oxygen diffuses to the cells in the capillary beds. The mitochondria receive a PO2 of 1 to 5 kilopascals depending on the specific capillary bed. And it's worth noting, an increase in the size at any stage in the oxygen cascade may result in hypoxia at the mitochondrial level. What are the causes of an increased alveolar arterial gradient? As we said before, normally the alveolar arterial gradient is less than 2 kilopascals. The partial pressure of oxygen in the alveolus is 15 kilopascals, and the partial pressure of oxygen in the artery is 13.3 kilopascals. In healthy individuals, this small difference is caused by VQ mismatch and physiological shunt. Increased alveolar arterial gradients, as we would see in certain diseases, can be caused by the following. Diffusion impairment, for example, pulmonary edema and pulmonary fibrosis. VQ mismatch, as we would see in severe hypotension, COPD, low respiratory tract infection and asthma. Finally, pathological shunt, 
An intrapulmonary example of this would be atelectasis. An extrapulmonary example would include right to left cardiac shunt. What are the causes of hypoxia? Hypoxia can be categorised into four different types. The first being hypoxic hypoxia, which is caused when the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveolus is less than 12 kilopascals. And this can be caused by a low fraction of inspired oxygen, hypoventilation, VQ mismatch, diffusion impairment, and shunt. Number two, anemic hypoxia. This is where the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveolus is normal, but the oxygen content in the blood is low. This can occur in the acute and chronic anemias, and also when there is a pathology which affects haemoglobin's ability to bind with oxygen, as we see in carbon monoxide poisoning. 3. Stagnant hypoxia. This is where the PaO2 is normal, the oxygen content in the blood is normal, however this cannot be delivered to the tissues. And an example of this would be cardiogenic shock. Number 4. Histotoxic hypoxia. This is where the PaO2 is normal, the oxygen content in the blood is normal, and it's delivered to the tissues, however cells are unable to utilise the oxygen at the mitochondrial level. What methods can be used to increase oxygen delivery to tissues? Increased oxygen delivery can be achieved by increasing the oxygen content of blood or increasing cardiac output. To increase the oxygen content, we can increase the circulating haemoglobin and one way of doing this would be to administer a blood transfusion. We can increase the fraction of inspired oxygen by giving supplemental oxygen. In some cases, we would increase dissolved oxygen by increasing the partial pressure of oxygen, as we see in hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Ways of increasing cardiac output. We optimize heart rate and rhythm. We optimize stroke volume. We maintain perfusion pressure to ensure oxygen delivery to the organs, and the, all of the above can be achieved with the use of fluids and or the use of inotropes. Thank you for watching this video.